What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Mike T's back at you with another uh, crash course in silhouette business. And we're going to be discussing the trace method. Uh, I did a video over it once before and I felt proper. Um, I felt like it needed to be another course over it because I get asked this question a lot. So what you see on my screen is the underdog and it was a cartoon I think it came out maybe like the 60s uh, it's an older cartoon and it's popular starting to resurface again I had a customer walk into my store and ask me if I could make him an underdog shirt or a sweatshirt rather so I went to the World Wide Web via Google and I found the image of the underdog um, so for the trace thing um, finding line drawings or black and white drawings is ideally what you want to go for and you want to go for a clear picture so to my left or where my arrow is actually at you can see this is a trace from a clear uh, very very clear photo which almost looks vector and this was actually traced and that's from this photo right here that I'm moving as you can see he's standing over the wolf or whatever it is see how clear that image is now here's a demonstration of the other one and side by side you could tell they're visibly different this one has a lot of distortion in it and when you're going to copy it and trace it you're going to get all of that distortion whereas this one is crystal clear so to get from here to here I'm just going to actually pull up my World Wide Web so you guys can see I actually clicked on the image so I scrolled over uh, the underdog total television character whatever there's this image you could just copy and trace direct from here but then you'll end up with that bulky image that I showed you I actually hit view image and once it brought it up it brought up a very clear high resolution of that image um, so when you go here and you're just like browsing stuff and you're, you're going, you can kind of see it with your eyes. You can catch it, but sometimes you don't catch it, especially if you're in a hurry. Like, for instance, this is very high resolution. This is high resolution. This is low. Um, you can tell by the distortion in the actual picture. You want to stay away from these because you'll get those jagged edges. Now, ultimately, you can work with those edges via the threshold. Let me go back to silhouette and you can copy and trace so I'm going to give two examples of that so I'm going to do over so you guys see these two images right here which I had previously did this one we're not going to do this was a high resolution image I'm going to use this for the back of the shirt and this is going to be on the front of the shirt sweatshirt rather I'm just going to move it out the way and we're going to move this one out the way um, and we're going to actually make two traces so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So we're going to use the rough image first. And we're going to go over to our trace panel, which is on the far right drop down menu. And it's one, two, three, four, five. The fifth panel down, it says open trace manual. I always like to refer to this as the butterfly because to me it looks like a butterfly. I click on it. It gives you options to select and trace, uh, do a solid fill or just the outline. Here's the threshold right here, the despeckle threshold, the high pass filter, which we very rarely even touch this. This is for a whole nother option. We'll get into that later on in the series. And then the scale. This is the most important when it comes to getting away from those jagged edges. So I'm actually going to hit select trace area my arrow has just now become a plus sign and I'm not getting the bottom I just want him actually standing on the sewer cap and let it do its work it takes a few seconds for it to register but as you can see it's kind of bulky and then you see the distortion around the actual image that is traced all of that is going to come over with you when you trace even though you don't see it the distortion will still be relayed throughout the image be careful of that uh, to the normal person, I mean, it really, they really might not catch it, but if you're the one creating the shirt, it, 
I don't know about you guys, but it drives me crazy whenever I get an image and it's like jagged like this. So, you want to mess with your threshold a little bit because as you can see, the lines aren't quite filled in. They're kind of rough and there's like missing spots and like dark spots in the actual image. Usually what I would do is hit the threshold, but while I'm hitting the threshold two or three times, I'm coming down to the scale as well to try to keep those lines smoothed out. Every once in a while, you'll have to hit the this speckled threshold. Um, and what that does is the whole image as in itself, it'll try to make it more uniform and get out some of those lines. But ultimately, you have to play with the, the scale, the, the speckle, and the original threshold. But no matter what you do, if it's a horrible picture, it's just a horrible picture. So as you can see, I'm trying to darken up where it's like darker images. And you can actually see it filling in. But it's getting bulky as I hit that threshold. So now my threshold is at 69. And the image is very bulky. Like it's away from the original lines. And it kind of looks choppy to me right here. But generally, this is what people have the issue over. So I want to explain in great detail what it was. So that would be about the extent and as far as I would go. I would then hit trace. Now you can hit the trace outer edge, which will just get simply the outer edge, nothing on the inside. You could do the trace and detach method, which is very useful if you're doing sublimation and you want that crystal clear picture. It'll remove the actual white border that's around the picture. But we're just going to hit trace. And once your image turns back, you don't no longer see the dark uh, film over it. That's when you know it's traced. Now, I'm going to remove that. Now, to the, to, to the naked eye and to a person that's really not into the detail, this doesn't look too bad. Not at all. I mean, it would even pass. And I've seen a lot of shirts like this. So what I like to do, especially when I'm checking for crispy lines, is I'll actually highlight the image and I'll change the color from the right side, drop down menu. And you also can change it um, on the left hand side up at the top. And you can also change the line from red to whatever color you want to. We'll also get to that later on. But we're going to just choose the color palette on the far right drop down menu. It is the third icon down. It looks like a, a actual painter's palette and the image is already selected and we'll hit the black now it still doesn't look that bad it doesn't look as bad as this one um as you can see i was messing around this one just came out horrible maybe because i just traced it and i didn't actually mess with the threshold or the scale so you can tell visibly that that scale and that threshold ultimately ultimately plays a part in uh, the overall end version of the trace. One good way to tell if your lines are crooked or not, if you can't see it after you originally trace it, is to simply zoom in. And I do that by hitting Command and Plus. As you get closer, you can see these very jagged edges. And that will come out on the vinyl looking just like that. This, if you're layering, is a nightmare because now you not only do you got to layer the image, you also got to layer these jagged edges in a way that where everything looks formal or conformed together. But yeah, that's a pretty bad trace job. There's a blank spot right here in between, and that's because I didn't go higher on my threshold between this actual line right here. But overall, I mean, it just looks very amateur outreach. So to me, this wouldn't pass at all. Like I've literally stayed up nights trying to find that right image to trace so I can get the best quality possible because hey, it's your reputation that's on the line. I just want to show you that up close so you can see what I'm talking about. These jagged lines should not be there at all. Like this was drawn with a pencil, but if this looks like somebody that had a shaking problem while they were drawing. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So let's zoom back out on that one. And you can see it on here as I did zooming out. There's actually a lot of jagged edges right in there. These are what I call failed traces. 
You want to stay away from those guys. Now, Zoom Data doesn't look as bad, and like I said, the customer that's coming in, they're really not going to be all up and close, but then you might have that one customer who be like, why does it look so jaggedy? And that's part of the reason. The image that you chose was blurry, and you didn't mess with the threshold or the scale or the speckle. You just copied, you traced it, and then you ran with it. No. So, if I can't find a better image quality than this, I'll avoid this altogether and go elsewhere to look. I will look until I find something as crystal clear as this. Now you can visibly see is this is even brighter. The lines are really sharp. And if you zoom in on the image itself, command and plus, like you can see where that distortion is going to cause jaggedness. I mean the overall picture is just horrible the quality. Whereas on here, it doesn't look as bad. There's no distortion around the original image. And yeah, there's regular pixelated lines, but that's going to happen because one, I didn't draw it. Two, this is not a vector image. This is just simply an image that was taken off of Google. Zoom back out. And let's take a look at the images of the high resolution pictures. So here's the first one that I copied from this one. And once again, we'll just get in close, really close. And we'll look at it. Now see how there's no jagged edges, how crispy that looks. No shaking edges, no, no real craziness. I mean, now lining and layering this up is going to be a breeze. And yes, if you guys caught it on the other one, this was originally another issue that I said. It didn't, I had to stop because I didn't want to go overboard with the threshold. I got to just where I could say, okay, that's enough. So generally what I would do to clean this image up a little bit when you hear folks say that is I would come over to the left drop down menu. I would get the eraser tool. And for some odd reason, when I got the new solo business, the eraser tool was retardedly huge which we're going to get into that in another episode. But up top, if you got the newest cameo, you can actually adjust the size of the racer. It doesn't make it that much smaller, but it might be small enough to get what I'm trying to go for, which is just that little piece. I want that out of there. One, there's no need for me to try to weed that out. And two, it was just an extra piece. So we'll look around the image and see what else we can clean up. Like there's a spot here, a spot there. And I just want to make sure that that's kind of straight when I go to cut it. So I'll get in close with my eraser, just the tip of my eraser, and I'll actually remove it. I don't want that there either as well. I'm trying not to nip the other corner. Now if I really want to be extra, I can go in and draw more lines around here to make this just a little bit better. So... You see this is the ear from off the wolf that he was actually standing on. We're going to get rid of that as well. And how we do that is we come over to our knife tool, which is the second from the bottom all the way down. It's a knife tool. And what I like about the program, the update on the knife, is you have the choice up here at the top left-hand side to do a straight cut, a poly cut, a curve cut, freehand, which is what I'm going to go for. And it gives you the ability to actually cut freehanded. It doesn't have to be a certain way. And I'm just doing this right now for the sake of the video, but all right, I didn't like that cut, so I'm gonna hit Command Z, bring that back, and we're gonna cut that one more time. Try to get a straighter cut. But that's what the freehand, the freehand method you're able to cut any way that you want it. like a whole circle <laughs> a name anything that you can think of and then we're going to just move those two pieces that i cut out the way also a lot of times when you cut like that freehanded it uh tends to release the whole image so at the end i'll make it smaller and i'll actually uh compound group everything or group everything if you guys are familiar with Silhouette, you know what I'm talking about, which is this left menu. Let's just click on it. 
and it brings up, well, ungroup and group. It must have not ungroup, which is it hasn't. Or you see a lot of little red spots. And then it has to release compound or make a compound path. We're not going to release the compound path. That image right there is clean. That's why we consider crispy. That's passable. Um, let's move this over, actually. Oh, it did release it again. It just wasn't showing. So Command Z put everything back in place, and since I know that everything has released since I made those minor cuts, we'll just make a square over it, and we'll hit Command G, which groups everything. Or you can hit Make Compound Path, which is the same thing as Group. Alright, now we'll move that over to the side, and we'll go back to the original messed up. Might have deleted it. Nope, I didn't. Okay. So I'll even make it the same size. Now there's more detail on the second one because I went overboard with the threshold, but I didn't need all of that. I just needed this. And I'll probably go back and draw another line and actually put this in there so it looks like he's just standing on a sewer cap. Uh, Command plus so we can get back in there. Let's look at these images side by side. Night and day difference. If we were to bring them, the hands are bulky and choppy in this one. The hands are straight in this one. Even the outline of the eyes are bulky on this. This is perfect. This is the way I envisioned it. The U, this is the underdog U and actually what it looks like. This one right here looks like overboard with it. And even down to the sewer caps, which he's standing on. This one looks horrible. This one looks great. And the same with actually this one here and this. Now, there are some little lines in here that you can get in and clear out, which I'll do when I'm actually getting ready to do the cutout. But for layering, this is going to be a breeze. This would be a nightmare. And those jagged edges, they actually do show on the vinyl. So this has been a second follow-up to how I copy and trace. If you guys have any other questions, please drop some comments down. And um, hit those affiliate links if you're looking for some good vinyl. My vinyl of choice, if you guys must know, is Econo Transfers. I rock with them. I've been with them for a while. Uh, a runner-up to Econos would be the Walla uh, Express. Both very, very great uh, vinyls. Um, I love the way that Econo weaves. I love the way that uh, Transfer or not Transfer Express, that Walla Express weaves. So. This has been another episode of River Copy and Trace. And like I said, if you have any other questions, please hit me up. And if you're not in the squad on Facebook, tap in, chime in, get in there. There's valuable information from day to day. There's people willing to help people around the clock. Not only people that's in the custom apparel business, but it goes as far as the cooking, as far as shoemaking, as far as portraits, as far as hand drawings. I mean, there's a plethora of things in the squad. And to the next one, though, y'all, I'm out. And I appreciate each and every one of y'all that watched my video. Hello to all the new subscribers and returning subscribers.